This time on Distant Shores, I get to experience some very exciting sailing on a Bahamian sloop. We have an amazing crossing of the Great Bahama Bank and explore Long Island Bahamas. So what's up this morning? Yeah. Right now we're going, we're going to do a quick travel to make sure I'm fine doing the boat to get up prepare for the first race. Okay, so yeah. when's the first race? Uh, the first race is at 10. So All right. We, we're going out now to make a few adjustments. That's the fine tuna for the race. Thank you for inviting me along. Yeah, you're oh, very cool. Thank you. The Bahamian C-Class Sloop must be no longer than 17 feet, but the boom length is not restricted. Good morning, good morning. Neither is mast height or sail area. You can see this has encouraged the local builders to increase all these in search of more speed. Of course, large sails would tip a normal boat over in even light breezes without people like me. My job is to be movable ballast and slide in and out on the pry board to counteract the tilting force of the sail. In many ways, these sloops represent the ideal sailboat racing competition. The rules forbid use of expensive modern materials so local enthusiasts can still build their sloops in the old way, on the beach or in the backyard without breaking the bank. We filmed a segment with a Bahamian backyard boat builder in the Exumas a few years ago and asked what he liked best about the island sloops. Well, we, we, like, we like doing it. We just like the fun of building boats and we love to race. So we build it to race. <laughs> we love to build them faster and faster and faster. So that's what we do. How long does it take to build a boat all together? Well, if you work on it like every day, you only take about a week or so. But I only work on it like weekend and the evening. And then when I don't be there, my son, you know, he do a little work. Yeah, and, uh, do the deck here? Pulling it straight out, and then you're pushing it in the next side of the boat. I get a lesson on the pry board, and it's my job to shift one of these over when we tack. You see? See right under? Yeah, okay. So, what's going to get up from, a minute? That stops it from pulling out? Yeah. That it goes underneath? Yeah, so what's going to happen? See how it's on the deck. When we start, this part here is going to be under here. Push it underneath. It goes it's going to be under here. Right. And now it's jammed in. Right. Yeah, and then you sit out there, the bottom yeah. of the boat off. So two people or three people? Two. 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 Now, yeah, yeah, put it on. It's quite heavy to manhandle the pry board in under the side deck and quite exciting to climb out to the end. Now I've climbed out onto the wrong board and have to cross over to the second one where I'm supposed to be. I'd better not fall off since we get penalized if we finish with a different number of crew than we started with. We're approaching the mark on Port Tack and we need to tack over to starboard before the next boat arrives. Just now, Sean. 
I'm gonna tell you the right to do it. We're gonna put me We're doing great. Okay, sit down. The only thing will come up. Yeah, we're on top of it. How are we doing? Great, man. We're in second, we're in second right now. Great day, great race. Great racing. What's my favorite part, right? Yeah. Basically, the competition. Competition. You got a good fleet. These boats are mostly just from this island, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. All of them, except one. The population of the Exuma Islands is just over 7,000, yet fields a fleet of a dozen C-class sloops, and that's just the C-class. There are the larger A and B classes as well as the traditional E-class racing sailboats. What a great day. I ask if I didn't perhaps slow them down on the course. Thank you. So what place are you in? Second overall. Second overall? Oh, congratulations. From Georgetown, it's a 40-mile sail across the Great Bahama Bank to Salt Pond on Long Island. You have to be careful with your navigation since there are areas of shoals en route. Long Island is 130 kilometers long, about 80 miles, but has a population of just 3,000 people, mainly descended from Loyalists who were fleeing the American Revolution with their slaves. The island capital is Clarence Town, population 350, with a sport fishing marina and two historic churches. When we last visited Long Island, it was for the annual regatta held each June. Traditional racing sloops arrived from island groups all around the Bahamas. It's too far to sail them, so the owners get together and organize local freight boats to do the transport. But the shallow water in the approach to Salt Pond Town Dock is tricky even for the shallow island freighters. We waited an hour until the tide was high enough to get the ship up to the dock. Then it was quite the production lifting each race boat off and unloading continued for the rest of the day. Island regattas are important social events in the isolated settlements of the Bahamas. We talked to one of the boat owners who had just spent the last 20 hours on the ferry looking after his sloop. This is your boat? Southern Cross. Yeah, that's my boat. So where are you coming from? I come from New Providence. Okay, so you bring the boat all the way from New Providence? All the way from New Providence, up to Long Island, just to have some fun. And some good, smooth sailing. Huh? Yeah, most definitely it's going to be a good week. All oh, these folks, man, you can't, you can't help from having a, a lot of fun. Yeah, man. One of the toughest maneuvers when sailing is known as jibing. When you turn so the wind moves from one side of the boat to the other and the boom must swing across. Much harder on boats with such enormous booms and mainsails as these island sloops. Mix that up with boats rounding the mark and you have the potential for some exciting racing.
a near collision averted with just a few crew going overboard. But good sailing is not the only reason to visit Long Island in the Bahamas. There are many historical and beautiful natural sites to visit here, and Cartwright Cave combines both. Well, this is a really great cave for me to explore because I'm a little bit claustrophobic, but this cave has got so many openings and air and light and beautiful colors. I'm just so glad that I'm not missing the experience. So if you're like me and feel a little bit uncomfortable in enclosed spaces, this is a great cave to explore. Busted Bridge Bar and Grill. This looks like it'll be a great place. Unfortunately, they're closed, I guess, because of all this wind. But hey, looks like the Busted Bridge will be repaired soon. We're looking at bringing the boat up to the end of the island. This is another one of the nicest anchorages. And we were first here 30 years ago. Ah, yikes. I remember some nice snorkeling. I think it was one of the first times we did any, tried any spearfishing. Right now, it's, uh, looks pretty good. There's quite a blow going on, but you can see what we've got is some really nice conditions in here because the wind is pretty much offshore and uh, just a bit of a swell rolls around the point. So that's the biggest area, biggest danger is when you've got uh, the swells rolling around back there and coming into the bay. And uh, you can see the catamaran back there. It's a little bit, a little bit rolly. We'd love to stay longer, but have to get back to Georgetown to catch a plane to speak at the Toronto Boat Show. It's a perky day, but the wind's behind us, so it's going to be a downwind sleigh ride. In shallow water like this, waves will only grow to be a maximum of about 55% of the water depth. This water is 10 feet deep and will not change much for the next 20 miles. So even today, blowing a steady 30 knots, we expect the waves to reach a maximum of five to six feet tall. In this shallow water, the waves are interacting with the white sandy seabed, stirring it up for this milky blue appearance. Onwards to Georgetown Harbor entrance, Great Exuma. Should get into before sunset. Waves are getting pretty big. It's flying 25, gusting a little higher, maybe gusting to 30 today. Gorgeous day. Should be nice, sunny, sunny sail. Today's passage involves returning to Elizabeth Harbor at Georgetown using the southern entrance. This is a tricky entrance since there are reefs either side and no aids to navigation. Our plan is to head towards the westernmost of Middle Channel rocks on a bearing of 236 true until the largest of North Channel rocks bears 90 degrees astern. You must have good visibility to do this entrance. We need to put the port side Genoa away as we come onto a beam reach for half a mile before going back downwind again in behind the reef. fun and we're supposed to be on a plane right now but something wrong with the plane so we are 
here, still in Georgetown. I've got a hotel for the night at home to speak in a couple of days. Paul and I have been cruising internationally for over 30 years and are dedicated to helping others get out on the water and sailing to distant shores too. Boat shows are a great opportunity to meet you in person, connect with other speakers, and host special events for members of the Distant Shores Cruising Club, our membership site on Patreon. We speak at numerous boat shows throughout the year and conduct cruising seminars as well. And while we're all in lockdown dreaming of better days, we're going to be conducting a series of online seminars too, so all of us are ready to get out sailing when things open up again. You'll find more information in the description below. We look forward to you joining us.